Okay, let's, uh, obviously we got this new album called 13, it's coming out on Tuesday. Right? Yeah! So, um, kind of to continue the same thing, sort of moving bass lines and creating sort of counter melodies that lay out some stuff for the solo, and um, give a chance to play, give Chris a chance to play one of his solos uh, that he wrote for the new album, so, uh, want to play uh, Public Enemy Public number one? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Because you know, and, and I've, I've watched this dynamic happen a lot over the years. Maybe not quite as much with you and Dave, you know. Right, right. Um, but figuring out two guitar player parts, right? Because sometimes we all play the same thing, including me, right? right. Like symphony, for instance. And then there's times when, even in a rhythm, you'll split off and do something else. Maybe it's a harmony or another part. And then, of course, obviously you're trading solos and stuff. Right, right. How, how do you? How do you do? I, it's funny I'm playing a band with these guys. And I don't know. How do you do that? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a you know it's kind of the same thing as when you you add the texture of a bass or you add the vocals on top. You know, it's and again, you know, the first thing you should begin with is vision. You know, when you have a vision for what you're going to play, that's the the best thing. I've known people that, you know, they haven't taken one theory class, one they don't know anything, but they know what they hear and they know what they want to hear over the top. So that's number one. But then, you know, a lot of times when I go in and write in the studio, I'll look at things like counter melodies and, and different harmonies that you can place over the top. Um, with that particular uh, solo, actually, you know, we took the, I took the line and, and then I put that to the... Maybe a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> but at any rate, uh, that's I took that line and, and put it over the top, and basically it creates you know an A minor, and then it creates an F major, and then an F sharp diminished, and so on and so forth. You know, I just kind of create these chords over the top with the arpeggios that I'm playing, and so that's you know I, I do it both ways. I love to think just with when I uh, when I hear a rhythm and I, I try and hear what I'm going to hear over the top of it. But then my uh, my compositional mind kind of comes out, and it says, "Oh, well, what if you took that chord that they're playing underneath you and you put uh, Phrygian dominant over the top of it, or something silly?" You know, it's like so I start tweaking with things after the fact. 